Ugh. This is horrible, Max. Ugh. I wash my hands after this. You right, Max? This what you want? Go on then. Go on, you take it. Have fun. Enjoy. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of James and Boxer's Toys, and today we've got a special sort of T-Rex. I know Mattel makes a lot of T-Rexes, and let's be honest, turtlenecks are quite the style. With the 30th anniversary that Mattel have done, they have also released something that kind of was in the initial release of the Kenner toys, that being a spiritual successor. Uh. Spiritual successor to the red tears of Jurassic Park, but uh, presenting it is, of course, the beautiful assistant. No, that's the wrong one. No, no. Uh, it's funny, no, that's the wrong one. It's the one in the packaging. Not, not the one that's like 30 years old. Yeah, you want it, thank you, thank you. See so what I have to work with here? Good work is hard to find. That's the one, now give it here, give it. Hello! And <laughs> here it is! The 30th, I think it is, anniversary. Oh, maybe it's not the 30th anniversary. Although they say up there, JP30. They know what they're doing. The Red Tyrannosaurus! <laughs> go on. Do you need to do this? Do you need to do this? Up to go. So, what do we have? Of course, sporting the best Jurassic Park logo the franchise has ever seen. The yellow one doesn't get enough recognition. Sick of the red one. This one is perfection. Anyway, let's have a look. What do we get? Well, we have, I, I mean, we'll get into the T-Rex. We'll just look around the box. Yeah, of course, very reminiscent of the vintage red T-Rex. And of course, it is supposed to be as of that. If we look at the back as well, <laughs> ugh, you've got a lovely sort of diorama or, you know, spectacle picture of the T-Rex in action, which was, of course, what Kenner used to do. They used to have their action figures or the toy on the back of the box in an environment that the kid obviously wouldn't be able to recreate, but it just made it look cool. And really a kid all it needs is that to have the imagination to bring it to life. Real feel. And then in every other language under the sun, except for Japanese. <coughs> That's where you put the dun. Hello? Realismo Electronico. I like that language. Whitney, oh, could you pass me the cereal, oh? And I'd like to have it for breakfast, oh. Thank you, oh. Tyrannosaurus. That's, that's that language with the O again, isn't it? Everything with the O. But also at the bottom, you've got what is also in this set, this, this 30th anniversary that, unfortunately, distribution in the UK, this is the only thing I could find. I would have bought the rest of the 30th anniversary if I could have. And I think Universal, oh sorry, Mattel, have sent me that back in Japan, but I won't know until I get back. As well as seeing the other dinosaurs in this set sporting wonderful BDSM. Look at the Gallimimus. He's got handcuffs on with his mouth muzzled, and so is the Dilophosaurus. Even the baby Triceratops is getting in on that stuff. Anyway, enough of that. Let's take this Jurassic Park fossil out of the box. <laughs> and here she is! Tell you what, it definitely feels different. Very different to what I'm used to. It's almost like it's not hard plastic. Oh, that's good. That's a nice- <gasps> It's bendable? Oh my god, I didn't think it was bendable. I thought they would have just put rubber on top of solid plastic and be like, oh, well, there you go. But actually, wow, you can, you can, oh no, you can't, can you? Oh, okay. I thought for a minute there, you can, can you pose the tail a little bit? You can, it does actually have like joints in the tail. Oh, that's great. At least with the left and right, it seems to have some sort of staying power there. Right, what else we got? If we open the mouth, can it eat things? Oh, it They added the thing. Although, saying that, that is very small. I don't know what you're going to be able to put in there and then... But let's try an Owen Greedy! <laughs> what about a Claire? You know what? 
Claire is the villain of the Jurassic World franchise. We may as well get Claire eaten. You almost had it. You almost didn't release the dinosaurs into the wild. And then you let the stupid little British girl do it. Ah, get in. Oh, that was way easier than I expected it to be. <laughs> well, how many Claire's can fit inside of the dressing Park theory? So what can we do with the head? I mean, what do you not need to do? That, that's beautiful. I just hope that it's solid enough that in maybe a year or so's time, or you know, when a kid plays with it, it might as well be a year or so's time, that the head doesn't get loose and sort of, I don't know, do some weird droopy thing. But this is amazing. It looks so good. Even do like even down to the uh, the airbrush spray on the bottom. Are you electronic? Do you have the button on the top? <laughs> Oh, but you have multiple sounds. Okay, that's two. I'm waiting for that iconic one. I'm waiting for the, well, it could be two. You know, after the, it's destroyed, the Ford Explorer thrown it off and it looks at the camera and goes, ah! That's close enough. I mean, I remember being a kid and I would have a, a dinosaur toy like this. I would wait for it to get to the good one. And then, you know, when you're playing with it, then you do, you go, ah, and it would do the good one. Gorgeous. This, this is top notch. I can't knock this at all. I mean, even at the side, if it's a thing, I, I assume they still do it because there's that little app thing that you can do where you scan the dinosaurs and you've got it. Did they forget to put the scan code in my T-Rex? <laughs> no! No, hold on. Hold on a minute here. Even though I bought the thing, and remember, it's facing this way, I think, was it facing that way? I think it was facing that way. So there's no way of knowing of how, uh, of the, if the scan code was in there, but I'm no expert, but that leg, doesn't look like it ever had any adhesive stuck to it at all. <laughs> Just as I was saying, it's flawless and I can't fault it. You go and make me fault it, Mattel. You make me do it, not me. <laughs> I'm not that fussed about it. If I, you know, I don't scan the toys. I'd rather sort of collect them. Also, you can make it do sort of the splits. So that's good. If you're balancing it on a bit of an uneven surface is also a lock mechanism there. This brings up the question. I mean, it is technically the same sculpt as all the other T-Rexes that we've had in the past. It is beautiful. I love it. It roars. Even its arms have up, down, and left, right motions. Or what'd you call it? Uh, points of articulation? Jesus, I've pulled that out from my head. <laughs> it's been so long since I've done an unboxing that. Yes, that is right. You've also got the hard plastic in the mouth as well. Love it. Right. Did it take so long to get this into production? You had the license since 2018 and it took you five years to get a rubber dinosaur toy. Let's compare it to the original. Well, 30 year old, wow. It's like, uh, you know, you do have those throwback pictures of me 30 years ago, me now. Although I'm kind of wondering whether the 30 years ago is better. Uh, you know, usually it's like an upgrade, but nowadays it's with toys, it's never usually an upgrade. But I mean, it's, it's colors faded a little bit over time. Comparing the two, what can I say? Will he be a forever nostalgic fanboy or will he turn to the new leaf? Well, the answer might shock you. I actually think this one's better. Ah! I know, Oh, cancel him immediately. Uh, let me explain why I actually think this one's better. For a start, you've got 30 years of innovation, so it technically should be better, right? If you have a look at this, which is actually modeled on the Stan Winston maquette, this T-Rex right here, modeled from the one in the movie, even though that's the case, if you look at the head, always looked a bit odd to me with the um, the cheeks. There's always a bit of a gap here and that kind of needs to be just to make the toy work. Yes, you could do that. You could open the mouth, squeezing the neck, but it just always seemed a little bit off. 
It seemed like it was great up until it got to the head and then something wasn't right to me. Also, I mean, do you lift? Look at that widespread. He's, he's ready to do some shoulder raises or, or God knows what. And they did keep it authentic because even the original Kenner from the 1990s didn't have its fingernails painted. So I can't really knock off any points for that because you didn't have them either. And not only that, but it has the, you know, the colossal feature and it's basically just the bull T-Rex from the Lost World Kenner line because you can get stuff out from the bottom. It has so many extra features that this one didn't. And if I'm gonna be honest, I would rather have a head and a neck that I can move in any like rotation, but also keep the mouth open at the same time. Like I could make it roar and go up and down like that with this guy. You have to squeeze the neck and then you're like, yeah. Basically this T-Rex here, it doesn't seem really fair to compare it to this thing because there's just no competition really. This will always have a soft spot for me. It was a T-Rex that I never had as a kid, but I remember seeing and going, whoa, that thing looks amazing. The, the, the color scheme of it being red, maybe it's like the novel, maybe the novel T-Rex was more red. But Steven Spielberg decided to not make it red, which makes sense, I suppose, you're realistic. Anyway, but this thing right here, I don't think I could have asked Mattel for a better thing. It, even if they reproduced that exactly, I would say, well, could you not have done something different? but they've taken their T-Rex. There's no mistaking. You see this T-Rex, this head sculpt, this body, the ginormous feet, which <laughs> this thing did not have. So maybe lose points for that. Where's your tiny toes? If we're talking about my favorite T-Rex model ever, get rid of you. It's this thing. Now this was the improvement I felt of the old Jurassic Park T-Rex. This being the Thrasher, or Thresher, I don't even know what you call it really, T-Rex from Lost World. You could shake its head, it could keep its jaw open, it had a mechanic so it could bite, even though it kind of doesn't really work now. Its paint scheme was beautiful. I don't think there's a comparison to be made. This thing is still 10 times better. I don't care if this thing can eat and then take things out of it. I'm not, I've got nostalgic, and not only that, but its fingernails are even painted. Can't argue with that. Can we? So in conclusion, how does it compare as a product on itself or even comparing it to, you know, its predecessor, what it's based on? I can say hands down without a shadow of a doubt, including all the T-Rexes I've unboxed on the channel, this one is by far the better. Whether you're a fan of this old one or not, this one takes everything that made that one great and turns it into something new and better and keeps all of the style and everything that Mattel is, is, gives us these days. I can't fault it. And if you too have enjoyed this video, like I have actually, this has been a load of fun to unbox this one. If you have enjoyed this video, leave a like and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye bye. <laughs>